The dollar bill. We see it, earn it, and spend it every day. But when do we ever really look at it? Embedded in its design are mysterious images and ancient symbols. There's a very distinctive uh, emblem, an uncompleted pyramid with the all-seeing eye of providence at the top. But why are they there? And what do they mean? America's secret destiny is concealed in those symbols. It's a civilization without a belief in God. Conspiracy theorists believe that these elaborate images are part of a political and religious plot dating right back to the birth of our nation, involving not only the founding fathers, but also one of America's most revered presidents, Franklin D. Roosevelt. And right at the heart of that plot are the Freemasons. Conspiracy is too conceited paranoia. She has many enemies What's going on behind the closed doors. It's a conspiracy. Conspiracy theories. What are the secrets of the dollar bill? A close look at the dollar bill reveals a complex design. It's loaded with images, images that have great symbolic significance. A pyramid, an all-seeing eye, an eagle, or is it a phoenix? What are they supposed to mean, and how did they get there? Conspiracy theories abound, fueled by radio phone-ins, contentious publications, even Hollywood blockbusters. But where does the truth lie? It all begins with this, the Great Seal, the official badge or coat of arms of America. It is this symbol that is known globally as the centerpiece of the dollar bill. And by understanding the seal, we can begin to decode the secrets hidden in the dollar's design. Most people, of course, when they think of the Great Seal, they think of the obverse on the front side. And that is an eagle with arrows and olive branch and six-pointed star above the eagle's head. And that basically was a symbol that most Americans accept as our seal. But on the back of the dollar, there are two circular designs, because the original Great Seal was two-sided, like a coin, with a front and a back. The front side showed the now familiar American eagle, but the other side showed a much more mysterious image. This is a totally different experience altogether. And there are symbols on it which aren't American. Where is there? There are no pyramids in America. But this pyramid was on the original two-sided design, which was created as the official seal of America. For thousands of years, cultures and peoples and governments have used seals to formalize and authenticate documents and indicate ownership and provide security. The seals were enormously important because they supposedly told you the origins of the nation, and its meaning, and to others who got deeply into heraldry, its purpose. Since its creation, the eagle side of the Great Seal has been an American icon. But the reverse side, showing the pyramid, is only ever seen on the back of the dollar bill. So why was it designed with two sides? And what do these images say about America's purpose? The Great Seal has evolved over time, but it is essentially based on an original design created by the Founding Fathers. At the time of the American Revolution, the Declaration of Independence from Britain, the mother country, it was very important for the new nation to have its own identity embodied in a seal. This seal had to serve as an emblem that would represent America to the rest of the world. The Founding Fathers knew it somehow had to symbolize the very values of the new country that they had fought for. On July 4, 1776, a committee was formed to make the decision as to what the seal should be. In fact, it took six years and the work of two additional committees before a final version of the Great Seal, which adorns the dollar bill, was approved. But over the next 200 years, the Great Seal became the subject of continuing and increasing controversy especially since it became the centerpiece of the design for the dollar bill. The suggestion is that there was a conspiracy 
that the design committees were infiltrated by a secret society, the Freemasons. Understand that the Masons are not working openly for their goals. They keep them secret. They put their symbols inside the seal so that only those who knew the secret could understand them. So who are the Freemasons? Although their earliest origins are steeped in mystery, modern Freemasonry can be traced back to the secret societies of stonemasons who built the great cathedrals of Europe. The Freemasons were formed originally for the same root, uh, reason that any craft organization was formed, uh, much as a labor union today. But by the early 1700s in Europe, Masonry was regarded as much more than just a craft organization. It had developed what might be considered an alternative philosophy, celebrating the knowledge and ancient traditions of the stoneworkers through elaborate rituals and secret ceremonies. Their basic philosophy is the brotherhood of man and the fatherhood of God. They are all inclusive. They were supposed to include all religions. By invitation only, aristocrats and scientists began to join the Masons, keen to explore and discuss different beliefs and ideas in the safety of their private lodges or meeting places. And it was men like these who helped the spread of Freemasonry in America. In the late 1700s, Freemasonry was uh, a relatively elite organization, uh, limited to the upper middle class uh, in the United States. It was also one of the few organizations that transcended the colonial boundaries. Freemasonry was Freemasonry, whether it was in the colony of Massachusetts or the colony of South Carolina. Freemasonry had become a secret society of educated and influential men, bound together in a brotherhood whose ties crossed all geographical boundaries and all religious divides. And there are some who believe that Freemasonry was, and still is, an alternative religion opposed to the traditional Christian faith. Freemasonry is a secret organization that they claim is not secret, but sacred. The, the, but it is secret. I can't go to their meetings, neither can you. Even, even the media can't go. So if they've got an evil purpose to change our civilization, and we don't want to change it, they've got to conceal it. Certainly in the War of Independence, Freemasonry brought together a disparate yet powerful network of men who played a vital role in the fight against the British. Many of the prominent Americans during the Revolution were Freemasons. Certainly George Washington must count as one of the most prominent, uh, Benjamin Franklin, uh, Paul Revere, uh, John Hancock. Uh, all of these men were Freemasons and very prominent in the Revolution. Benjamin Franklin then became a member of the first committee who worked on the design of the Great Seal. He was joined by Thomas Jefferson, also believed to be a Mason, although no official confirmation of this has ever been found. The final member of this committee was John Adams, who later became the second president of the United States. They were assisted by a heraldic artist called Du Cimetière. Du Cimetière was able to provide actually four design elements that went into the final seal. These were the date of independence, 1776, expressed in Roman numerals, a shield, the Latin motto, from many one, and the eye of providence, which is claimed to be a Masonic symbol. However, it's very hard to establish just how much influence any Freemasons had on the Great Seal, particularly as it did take two more committees, each with their own artist, before the final design was approved. One of the biggest problems in researching this area, and especially dealing with the Founding Fathers and the Great Seal, are many records have been burned and lost during the Revolution, deliberately, because the British decided they were going to eliminate as much of the secret societies that we had in the United States at that time. The British feared the power of these societies and the power represented by one iconic figure in particular. The man whose face still adorns the dollar bill, the first president of the United States, George Washington. 33 of his generals, 33 of them, were Freemasons. They knew how to keep secrets, and they were totally dedicated to the calls, ready to give their lives, and they did. So with the development of the Great Seal itself shrouded in mystery, 
it is hardly surprising that its use on the dollar bill excites such interest. Does a closer look at the familiar greenback reveal the influence of an underground organization? And have they hidden secret messages on the dollar to help them on their quest for worldwide domination? Who put the symbols on the Great Seal of America and the back of the $1 bill, and why are they there? Conspiracy theorists are obsessed with the idea that these images have a special significance to Freemasons. Even Hollywood is cashed in. The film National Treasure, starring Nicolas Cage, tells the story of a hunt for long-lost treasure hidden by the Masons. These films are enormously important because it's introducing Americans for the first time the fact that our founding fathers were involved in some things that historically have not been really discussed. And that's one of the things that intrigued people about national treasure, I think. It suddenly made them aware of things that they'd been looking at you know, all their lives. The, the triangle, the all-seeing eye that's on the pyramid in the back of the dollar, all those things had Masonic uh, beginnings. Conspiracy theorists have found support for this idea in the writings of the philosopher Manley Hall. Manley P. Hall, who is one of the great Masonic writers of all time, wrote a book called The Secret Destiny of America, and he said it was concealed inside the symbols of the dollar bill. So now we've got to go back to the back of our dollar bill and then find out what those symbols mean. And it's very rare that people have done that. I would say 99% of the American people have simply no idea what those two circles mean. The circles represent the two sides of the original Great Seal designed by the Founding Fathers. At that time, so-called pendant seals were still widely used. This was a wax disc that was attached to a document by ribbons and cords, often with a different image on each side. But wafer seals were then introduced instead. This was an adhesive paper disc that had the seal imprinted on it, and only the front side with the eagle design was ever used. To use two paper seals, uh, obverse and reverse, would take over six inches of space on a treaty or document. But some theorists question whether this is the real reason for the failure to use the reverse side of the seal. When you look at the Great Seal of the United States, on the reverse of the seal, there's a very distinctive uh, emblem, an uncompleted pyramid with the all-seeing eye of providence at the top. Uh, the all-seeing eye is a symbol that is indeed used by the Freemasons. It's suggested the pyramid was added by an artist named Francis Hopkinson, who had helped design the American flag. He was the advisor to the second committee charged with creating the Great Seal and he was also believed to be a Freemason. Francis Hopkinson served as the designer of the Connecticut $50 note, and in that design, he placed an uncompleted pyramid within a circle on the note. Having used that design successfully in Connecticut, he suggested it again uh, for the United States. But why put a pyramid on an emblem for the United States? If Hopkinson was a Freemason, then perhaps it might make sense. Even today, central to Freemasonic rituals are mythical stories linking the fraternity right back to the secret societies of stonemasons who built the tombs and temples of the ancient world. To Hopkinson, the pyramid would have represented a temple, a house of initiation, uh, ancient wisdom. The masons referred to the pyramid as a house for their god to live in. It was sealed up waiting for the New World Order when a god would enter that building and keep it as a house. The Freemasons generally refer to their god as the great architect of the universe. They saw this great architect, if you like, as being weights and measure and distance and geometry and, and everything that we see around us and the perfection of nature and harmony and balance. Um, rather than the traditional Judeo-Christian way of thinking. It's not, it's not so much anti-Christian, it's just different. But conspiracy theorists believe the Freemasons are immersed in the rituals of an ancient religion, which is very definitely anti-Christian. They don't believe in an act of creation. 
and a man who does believe in a creation believes in a, quote, monstrous absurdity, unquote. The, the pyramid is where they initiate people into this ancient mystery religion of a universe without a creator god. And that the pyramid on the Great Seal is unfinished is also significant. The meaning is that when the capstone of the Great Pyramid is finally lifted into place, that's when uh, America will truly become the nation that it is supposed to be. The emblem of the pyramid is just the beginning of the case mounted by conspiracy theorists to see hidden Masonic codes and messages in the iconography of the dollar. It's claimed that the eye at the top of the pyramid is also a Masonic image, taken from Egyptian hieroglyphs. Something the ancient Egyptians called the Wajit eye. And the Wajit eye, the eye of Horus, as it's known as well, seems to represent eternal life. It seems to represent life itself and resurrection. And it's the all-seeing eye of their god that they believe will indeed bring us ordo ab chao. That is their slogan, order out of chaos. That eye above the pyramid is not on the pyramid, which means their work is unfinished, and that the universe will be given order once their god assumes there's his rightful place in, on, in that pyramid. The eye is a recurrent Masonic image used in their artwork and temples, at least since the 1700s. The idea that the founding fathers arrived at the same imagery at the same time seems too much of a coincidence for some. Some of these conspiracy theorists and what they, what they believe is, is a system of secret societies all linked together. And there is some kind of malign, malicious intent here. As further proof of this veneration of long-lost secret societies, America's first president and distinguished Freemason, George Washington, wore a Masonic apron with what seemed to be an embroidered pyramid emblazoned boldly on it. And the layout of the new capital city that the Founding Fathers went on to build was apparently based on the architectural philosophies of ancient Egypt. Most of the buildings in Washington, D.C. were uh, created and founded by Freemasons. That was because building was their strength. They knew how to align buildings to certain patterns in the heavens. You could channel spiritual energies if your physical buildings were lined up with certain stars. But the hidden meaning of the dollar bill goes far beyond the curiosity of the pyramid and the all-seeing eye. Even the greatest symbols of America are open to a disturbing interpretation. The eagle is regarded as the prime symbol of the American Republic. It is said to represent freedom and strength and is the most familiar image of the great seal on the dollar bill. Some believe the original intention was to depict the far more sinister phoenix with its connections once again to ancient Egypt. Out of the waters of chaos, the phoenix arises and the land of Egypt is born. I think the use of the phoenix in uh, some of the early designs uh, for this absolutely represent the idea of the rebirth. What we have here is a nation being born out of rebellion, an, an incredibly formative time. But the phoenix was rejected in favor of the American bald eagle. There was a great debate amongst our founding fathers as to which bird we were going to name as our national bird. But it was always in my mind going to be the American eagle. These are from Masonic writers. In mysticism, the eagle is a symbol of initiation. The eagle was sacred to the sun. The eagle was also represented the great Egyptian sun god, Amun-Ra. So it's proposed that the eagle is not in fact American, but instead representative of the Egyptian sun god. So they knew that the, there was a connection between the sun god and the eagle, and that they would use that symbol as a symbol of the initiation into the secrets of the Masonic Lodge and also of the ancient mystery religion. Conspiracy theorists say the stars above the eagle's head helped to prove that the Masons embedded their messages on the dollar bill. Above the eagle's head is a cluster of stars, 13 five-pointed stars, and when you draw lines between them, you'll draw a six-pointed star. If the star is then lifted up and placed over the image of the pyramid, it points to specific letters in the Latin inscriptions surrounding it, which are believed to be an anagram. 
inside the American Dictionary is the word anagram, which is the intentional scrambling of the letters of a word to conceal the real word. So if you re-scramble, you get Masons. This is how we know that the Masons originated the drawings for the Great Seal of the United States. This search for concealed meanings in the iconography of the dollar bill is not confined to the images alone. It is claimed that the number 13, the most feared and superstitious number of all, is hidden throughout the symbols on the one dollar bill. The Masons in 1960 issued an article inside the New Age magazine in which they identify the number 13 and the, number of, the numbers of uh, different symbols connecting itself to 13 as being Masonic. They point out the repetition of the symbolic number 13. There are 13 leaves on the olive branch in the right claw, 13 arrows in the left claw, 13 stars above the eagle's head, and 13 bars and stripes on the shield. To all secret societies, the number 13 is enormously important symbolically. The number 13 symbolizes rebirth, regeneration, and when you're birthing something, when you're bringing something into formation, it's never easy. So the number 13 can symbolize not just rebirth and regeneration, but death, death of the old and the birth of the new. So there's an intentional concealing of the number 13 as being a Masonic number on the back of our dollar bill. 13 is regarded as an unlucky number in many different cultures. But according to conspiracy theorists, it has much more sinister implications. The number 13 represents the number of Satan the devil. And I think that's why the Masons revere the number 13. And that opens up a whole can of worms. They also believe there are other numbers embedded in the design of the Great Seal that have special significance to the Freemasons. On the eagle side of the Great Seal of the United States, if you count the feathers, you'll notice that there are 32 feathers on the bird's left wing and 33 on his right wing. This is believed to refer to the 33 degrees of masonry introduced by the Supreme Council of the Scottish Rite America's most prominent Masons, whose national headquarters are in Washington. The 33rd Degree Council that meets in Washington, D.C., claims in their own literature to, to be the mother jurisdiction of the world, the mother council of the world. Manly P. Hall called them the most powerful organization in the land, that they ordain kings and shape the destinies of worlds. That's called power. It's suggested there's one last piece of information on the dollar bill that reveals a Masonic plot. Above the eye at the apex of the pyramid, there is the inscription in Latin, Anuit Coeptis, which roughly translates as, Providence has favored our undertakings. But the conspiracy theorists claim that when it's combined with the second inscription, there is a dark message of intent. America's secret destiny is involved in the Latin phrases, annuit septus novos ordo seclorum, announcing the birth of the new world order. And that's what their goal is. The new world order will be worldwide when it's instituted in the near future. A new world order that abolishes the government and the church as we know it. This is in stark contrast to the message above the written number one on the dollar bill. In God we trust. It's going to be a new civilization. We're not going to live the way we're living now. It is predicted that this new world order will be a global phenomenon, ignoring all national boundaries and ownership of property. All traditional religions will be replaced by a new belief system, one dictated by the Masons. The theory goes that these groups of people are in, intent on, in effect, ruling the world, and that this is inherent in the Founding Fathers and what they do with the Great Seal. And the symbols upon the Great Seal are intended to show us this, to show the way. It's an enlightenment, but only again for those who have eyes to see. The evidence for hidden and possibly sinister meanings in the symbolism of the dollar bill appears to be stacking up.
How can historians, and especially Freemasons, possibly explain all this away? On the face of it, the suggestion that the dollar bill conceals hidden messages seems plausible. They were supposedly inserted by a small sect of Masons who had a hand in creating first the Great Seal and later the design of the dollar bill. Freemasons themselves find the whole idea of an elaborate conspiracy just laughable. You can also believe that Jews or Catholics or Muslims or Protestants are out to take over the world and force everyone to have their religion. And I don't believe that's true. Uh, so if anyone cares to think that the Freemasons are out there to serve themselves and themselves alone, I can't stop them, but I don't believe it. The establishment for the last 2,000 years has been a Christian establishment in the Western world. It's been an establishment where the church and state have been very closely interacting. And anything that comes against that, against that norm, uh, and claims an earlier heritage, or more sacred ideals, or symbols that mean deeper things than the whole of the Christian heritage, I think that's the problem. And it strikes fear into the hearts of the establishment. Perhaps the Freemasons have become a victim of their own secrecy. That mysteriousness has only served to fuel suspicion and the fear of the unknown. People don't like to have symbols that they don't understand and also that they think might be concealing important information from them. That's why I think Freemasonry has many enemies. But what of that symbolism? Freemasons counter that much of the argument to support the Masonic influence just doesn't add up. For example, conspiracy theorists have claimed that nearly all of the men who signed the Declaration of Independence were Masons, but there is no evidence to confirm this. 56 men signed the Declaration of Independence. Nine of them can be verified to be Freemasons. And when I say they can be verified, we have actual records of them having attended a lodge or we have a membership certificate. For the Constitution, uh, there were 55 delegates to the Constitutional Convention in Pennsylvania. 39 of the delegates signed uh, the Constitution of the United States. 11 of those 39 can be verified to be Freemasons. It is maintained that Benjamin Franklin was the only Freemason on the committees that designed the Great Seal, with the possible exception of the artist Francis Hopkinson. It's often claimed that Thomas Jefferson was a Freemason. Uh, the, the best evidence that they can offer is that the Freemasons marched in his funeral procession. Uh, of course, every civic organization in the state of Virginia that, and every civic organization that could travel there marched in his funeral procession, so that's not surprising. Modern scholars have looked at the record and it's completely lacking. When you look for the hard evidence, there is nothing there. Jefferson was not a Mason. And although Benjamin Franklin was certainly a Mason, he was not instrumental in suggesting all the symbolism. That was the responsibility of the artistic advisors the committees used to help with the design. Well, if you look carefully at the committees who helped design it, you find that there were no Freemasons that actually added to the design of the Great Seal of the United States. If it was the artistic advisors that chose the images, it's possible their inspiration had nothing to do with the Masons. Graphic symbolism is as important in the 18th century as it is now in the 21st century. So there was a standardized visual language which stood across Europe and, of course, the United States. At a time when many people still couldn't read, this common visual language was taught through the use of emblem books. Emblem books became standard pattern books for engravers, architects, engineers. So by the time you get to the early 18th century, Ripper's emblem book was the standard piece of design equipment that you'd find in any engraver's workshop. Emblem books contain stories of moral instruction presented through the use of symbols and verse. Children were brought up understanding the meanings of the symbols, even if they couldn't read. It was a code that you didn't have to break, that you were brought up with. So if you saw a particular sort of graphic symbol, you made certain sort of associations with it. 
It is suggested that the Egyptian imagery used on the Great Seal was part of this common visual code, rather than being specifically Masonic. Some of the elements, the, the all-seeing eye and the unfinished pyramid, have been used as Masonic symbols over the years, but they have also been used outside of Freemasonry. So in, in that sense, it's a use of common heraldic images. There was certainly a theory that Freemasonry originated in the mystery religions of Egypt and the Mediterranean. There is no historical evidence to support that. Certainly, Masonic lodges have used pyramids as a decorative motif, but none are officially adopted as symbols. And as for the all-seeing eye, Freemasons accept its significance, but suggest it was a popular logo of the time. The all-seeing eye has been a symbol that has been used traditionally to express the deity. So if you were looking for a compact way to represent God, then uh, the eye is small, it's compact, uh, and it lends itself to very impressive artistic renderings. Under this interpretation, the Founding Fathers were saying that God was looking over America, and according to their own words, setting out the reasons for the design. The pyramid signifies strength and duration. The eye over it and the motto allude to the many signal interpositions of providence in favor of the American cause. The question of the eagle is also less straightforward than the conspiracy theorists suppose. Benjamin Franklin, the Masonic master, was in fact opposed to the emblem of the eagle, preferring, as he wrote to his daughter, the wild turkey. I wish the bald eagle had not been chosen as the representative of our country. He is a bird of bad moral character. The turkey is, in comparison, a much more respectable bird. He is besides, though a little vain and silly, a bird of courage. Benjamin Franklin wanted to use a wild turkey because it was a very wily, tricky bird that was very smart. Uh, the eagle, on the other hand, is a carrion eater, uh, and he didn't think it was very noble. But the bald-headed eagle is a beautifully impressive bird. For better or worse, the United States rejected Ben Franklin's turkey uh, and accepted the eagle as a symbol of power and majesty for the United States. So an innocent explanation for the eagle even the sinister recurrence of the number 13 is played down. The number 13 appears time and time again in the symbolism of the dollar bill. If you are profoundly paranoid in your conspiracy theories, this is because the Freemasons uh, think the number 13 is important. And of course, there's the simpler explanation that there were 13 colonies. The number 13 has no significance to Masons. According to the official explanation, the 13 stripes on the shield represent the 13 original states. The motto, E Pluribus Unum, from many one, alludes to the union of these states. The olive branch and the 13 arrows denote the power of peace and war, which is exclusively vested in Congress. The constellation of stars above the eagle denotes a new state taking its place and rank among other sovereign powers. The Freemasons counter that all the symbolism seen on the dollar would have been common currency at the time the Great Seal was designed. And more importantly, they dismiss any notion of a plot to establish a new world order. The uh, motto on the Great Seal of the United, United States is Novus Ordo Seclorum. Uh, it comes, I believe, from Virgil. Uh, it means a new order of the ages. It does not mean a new secular order. Uh, there is no new world order or new order of the ages in Freemasonry. It's not used, it doesn't appear, and any other translation than the new order of the ages shows an abysmal ignorance of Latin. In fact, the Latin might have much more to do with straightforward politics than with any hidden messages. The Founding Fathers were referring to the birth of the new nation with a new form of government. Novus Ordo Seclorum, 
means basically the new order of the ages. What is the new order? The new order is a Republican form of government, not a political party Republican, but a representative form of government. America was not set up to be a democracy. America was set up to be a republic, and a republic means a representative form of government. Despite attempts to downplay the influence of Freemasonry, there seem to be too many mysteries about the dollar bill for which Masonic imagery offers a plausible explanation. And the success of the film National Treasure suggests a public willingness to see hidden meanings in the mundane. And there is one last, perhaps clinching piece of evidence. It involves a mysterious guru. The original inspiration for the eye-catching symbolism of the Great Seal remains controversial. Just how much the Freemasons were actually involved is debatable. But one thing is certain. That symbolism was only transferred to the dollar bill in 1935. And the man responsible was the President of the United States, who was also a Freemason. The Great Seal's placement on the dollar bill is Quite an extraordinary story. Secretary of Agriculture Henry A. Wallace, later Vice President Wallace, has taken credit for the suggestion that led to putting the Great Seal on the back of the $1 bill. Henry Wallace was a high-ranking Mason. He also had a lifelong interest in mysticism and the occult. He came across a book about the history of the Great Seal and was struck by the image of the reverse, which he had never seen before. He saw this pyramid in the eye in the triangle, and since he was a student of symbolism, and he had a guru, he had a teacher who pointed at the symbolism as being enormously important for the United States of America, and also, he was a Freemason. This guru, or teacher, was a mysterious figure named Nicholas Rurik. Nicholas Rurik was a, a, a Russian mystic and an artist. And he traveled widely, uh, especially in the 20s, to various nations that he felt that Lord Jesus Christ traveled in. His interest was making contact with Christ and trying to determine when Christ was going to return. Rorick came to New York for a period in the 1920s, and it was then he met Wallace. I think he had extraordinary influence over Wallace. Rorick, um, when you look at his paintings, you begin to understand this guy was a multiple genius. Um, to be just around a person like that has to affect your consciousness and, and uh, help you see meanings for things. There was much public disapproval for this relationship. And in later years, Wallace was ridiculed when letters he wrote to Rurik, referring to him as guru, were made public. This became um, very embarrassing later on to FDR and uh, Henry Wallace uh, because they were trying to say basically that Nicholas Rourke also served as a spy and was a communist. Rourke, strangely enough, after he inspired Wallace, who inspired FDR, finally gets to the point where he is no longer welcome uh, because of his, his spiritual beliefs. But through Rourke's teachings, Wallace well understood the importance of symbolism as an effective means of communication. And as a Freemason, he was struck by the image of the pyramid with the all-seeing eye above it. It is possible that Franklin and Wallace, uh, as Freemasons, were familiar with the all-seeing eye as a symbol of God because they had looked at Renaissance uh, drawings or paintings where it's used. But conspiracy theorists think there's much more to it than that. The Masons have to conceal their hidden agenda, their secret agenda for the United States. And so they, they offer the explanation that it was available in books of symbolism, that, that people were aware of these, and that that's where they come from. And I don't believe that's true at all. But beyond the familiar all-seeing eye, Wallace saw in one of the mottos a reflection of his president's administration. Henry Wallace felt it was of some value that that the Novus Ordo Seclorum meant the new order of the ages, meaning the New Deal. And so he went to uh, President Roosevelt and asked that they adopt it. The banks closed. President Roosevelt taking financial measures against the Depression. Social Security founded as he instituted a series of New Deal reforms. 
The New Deal was the name given to a series of programs introduced by President Roosevelt during the Great Depression with the aim of social reform and stimulating economic recovery. And confidence is growing on every side. Wallace saw the meaning of it, could easily interpret it because he was a member of a secret society, goes to FDR and says, uh, hey, look at this. I mean, this, is a, this tells the story of who we are and what we're doing and what we should be doing in the, in the future. Having discovered the reverse of the Great Seal had never been used, Wallace suggested to Roosevelt that they put it on a coin. In fact, Roosevelt decided instead that both sides of the Great Seal should be put on the $1 bill. It's interesting that President Roosevelt personally approved the design. Roosevelt often had influence on the final design of projects, whether money or stamps or architecture. And in this case, he reviewed the final version and had an input and made some small revisions. Are the conspiracy theorists right this time about the power of the Masons? Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Henry Wallace are two of the most prominent Masons uh, that have been members in the United States. Roosevelt is one of our 14 presidents that were members of the Masonic fraternity. You really do have what you could call a conspiracy on the, uh, the Great Seal as it's found on the back of the $1 bill. And they did believe it was Freemasonic. So despite being at the root of so much dispute, the symbolism hidden on the unused reverse of the Great Seal made it onto the dollar bill through the actions of Henry Wallace and one of the most powerful Freemasons of all time, the 32nd President of the United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Conspiracy theorists believe it is a covert declaration of intent from the Freemasons. And they don't want you to know what those symbols are. They're not going to make it public because it's a conspiracy. The goal of the Masons is to lead the world into the new world order. The American people, in fact, the people of the world, will never be given a chance to vote on this or to decide. We are going to get the new world order without vote, without decision by us. And so they've got to keep it secret. They believe the Freemasons among the Founding Fathers were concealing a message in the Great Seal. And it was one that was seen and understood by Wallace and Roosevelt. But Freemasons deny any malicious intent. For whatever reason, they may have thought it as a, an appropriate symbol of God. Uh, that's not a bad idea to remind the citizens uh, that God oversees everything they do when they pull out the dollar bill. Certainly, while historians agree that the Freemasons did play a central role in the birth of America and have continued to hold positions of power ever since, with 14 known Masonic presidents, they find no evidence of the plot for world domination. The anti-Masonic ideas that come about, especially from the 1770s onwards, are put about by fundamental Christians, by people who believe that these people were uh, intrinsically anti-Christian when actually they were, most of them were very good Christians indeed, uh, and would have thought of um, uh, nothing more disturbing than actually being called, you know, heretics or blasphemers. And I think that uh, a lot of this has got to do with that fear of the unknown, if you like. And the images on the back of the dollar bill are there because the founding fathers successfully managed to create a lasting symbol that represented the United States to the rest of the world. The design of the Great Seal has stood the test of time because it was a good piece of design. It worked. If it wasn't, they would have changed it, you know, and they haven't. It personified what America was in the middle of the 18th century, and it has personified what America is today. So it works, it's iconic. You've got the dollar bill, and you've got camel cigarettes, and you've got Coca-Cola, and you've got America. There seems little doubt that the imagery of the dollar bill holds important clues to the way in which America's political leaders viewed the fledgling republic and its future in the world. And the vision embodied in that imagery has been inspirational to many. But whether this was ever part of some broader Masonic conspiracy remains a mystery.